Hello everyone and welcome back to my next concept and analysis video. So for this video, the topic that we're going to be going over is social anxiety and how to overcome it. And later in the video, we'll be going over a video clip and analyzing how the people handled that situation they're in, keeping in mind this challenge that some people may face and you know how they could have handled themselves better or what they could have done better to make this situation less stressful for themselves. So uh, we're just going to get right into this video here and we should start by outlining what social anxiety is and um, you know kind of what the basis of it is. So the core fear of social anxiety it revolves around judgment. Okay so that's evaluation, scrutiny, criticism, rejection, embarrassment. So when people are in certain social situations, feelings and thoughts associated of that nature come to their mind and it can impact their behaviors, right? It could stop them from progressing towards their goals because they are concerned with these things rather than achieving. All right. So if we're going to get into the technical label of social anxiety disorder, as a phobia for what it is. Um, someone would be classed as having this social phobia when the fear of judgment inhibits their life, all right? So pursuing friendships, romantic relationships, meeting people, socializing, all these things you see listed down here, uh, being sexual, asserting yourself, being in public. So when people are inhibited in these areas of their life, they would be technically diagnosed as having social anxiety disorder, all right? Here's an interesting picture to share with you guys. Um, it's just to illustrate the effects of thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, right? So what we can see is with thoughts, what we think affects how we feel and act, okay? So thoughts can affect behaviors, what we do affects how we think and feel and emotions the same and it's just one cycle so it's good for us to be aware of this because when we're engaging in a certain behavior we know that can elicit a certain emotion and trigger a certain thought so we can use that for our benefit it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing as some people may come to be impacted under these circumstances of social anxiety right we can take advantage of this knowledge of this process and apply positive strategies using this model. So with people who experience social anxiety, obviously there's triggers for that, right? So what are the triggers? Attending a party could be a trigger. Um, you know, meeting someone you have a romantic interest in could be a trigger. Going to a meeting could be a trigger. There's many different triggers that people with social anxiety could have and they all pertain to social situations, right? So um, what are the different kinds of things that they could be feeling at those times? Well, they could have feelings of nervousness. They could be tense. They could have feelings of embarrassment. They could feel jittery. So, you know, just common things you'd associate with the feelings of anxiety, really. And um, even some of the thoughts, you know, let's have a think of some of the thoughts that might come to people's mind. Um, I won't know what to say. I might say something stupid. I'll appear tense and nervous. People will think poorly of me, won't enjoy talking to me. I've got to find a way out of this. So, you know, all of these thoughts, I mean, these are examples here, but what we know is that most of the think would, thinking that would come to a person, you know, who's experiencing that kind of a condition, it'll be insecure kind of thinking, right? So like a lack of confidence is what they'd be feeling. And we can see that in the thoughts here. Um, it's also interesting to indicate some of the core beliefs people have about themselves that could affect them in social settings. Um, you know, self-belief is a very, very important thing. And if we don't have enough of it, I mean, of course, you're going to feel anxious and insecure. So we've got to actually check what kind of beliefs we have about ourselves. What are our, you know, truths that we think of ourselves? So if people have beliefs like I'm socially inept, I'm bad at meeting people, making small talk. If people see me, see my anxiety or other flaws, I'll make a bad impression. They won't like me. So if the core beliefs are negative and, you know, assert that 
we're not worthy enough for certain situations, that's going to make our social anxiety worse in social settings. Um, you know, things that reinforce social anxiety are safety seeking behaviors. And uh, they're just a number of avoidance strategies people engage in because, you know, they're fearful of a certain situation or circumstance. They don't want to put themselves in a situation because they fear the outcomes. And some of the behaviors they might engage in could be not initiating in conversations, staying off by the sidelines. So, you know, not being someone who's actively involved in social settings, averting eye contact. Um, you know, they, they might have a withdrawal st strategy. They might say very little, not engage in talking much with people. Um, the focus could be very self-conscious. So, you know, they try to script what they say next focus on symptoms and try not to appear nervous. Um, so it sounds like, you know, people who are socially anxious, they're very much stuck in their head and they're not really focused on the present moment and what's going on in the present moment. And that's where they can get let off track because if their thoughts are negative and they give that too much emphasis, that's gonna take over the truth of the situation and the truth of the situation is for people who are experiencing that condition, uh, things are not as serious as it seems. It's, it's more of a mental aspect that they have to challenge and overcome. Um, so, you know, it is good to outline the consequences of safe, safety seeking behavior too, to help people understand, um, you know, the limitations they're putting on themselves. They're missing out on good things in life, right? missing out on achieving big goals, achieving their full potential, meeting new people, new experiences. So, um, you know, some of the consequences are outlined here too. People don't approach me because they think I'm not interested or that I'm unfriendly. Um, conversations are awkward, not flowing and short. Don't get to make new friends or dates. Uh, my anxiety, self-consciousness, embarrassment increase during the activity. Uh, feelings of depression and shame afterwards. Rumination about the bad parts of and for weeks or longer, which hurts my self-confidence and mood. I don't get to learn that my fears are greatly exaggerated and that I can cope well with them. So I don't build self-confidence or lessen my social anxiety. So um, this calls for us to challenge our thought patterns around our social anxiety and also to challenge ourselves to the situations that we're socially anxious about. So if there's things we know that we are avoiding, but are good for us to do, we should gradually face those things and overcome them step by step in incremental stages and track that in order to get better at those settings, be more calm and relaxed and confident. There are four key strategies that can help people overcome social anxiety, and they are listed here briefly. So one is mindful focus and thought diffusion, getting out of your head and into the moment. So as I was explaining, people who are socially anxious, they are very focused on negative thoughts at that time. You know, thoughts of inadequacy, thoughts of failure, nervous thoughts, um, insecure thoughts. And you know, their mind is so full of that and they're so focused on that that that's just going to affect their performance in the moment, right? So that's why they're going to feel all those ways that we explained in the beginning of this talk. So the key is getting out of your head and into the moment. You're focusing on the present moment, what's going on around you. You're doing your best to stay focused on that. And you're just ignoring all the thoughts and emotions that come up that you know are associated with your social anxiety, okay? And you try to focus on facts in the moment, what you're seeing factually to help you dis diffuse those kinds of thoughts. Um, cognitive restructuring is another one. Making your thoughts and beliefs more realistic, helpful and compassionate. So, you know, this could be to do with not beating yourself up, you know, not putting yourself down about certain situations, basically getting out of negative self-talk and engaging more in positive self-talk. And um, yeah, just having a, a caring approach to yourself in the situation, even understanding and accepting yourself how you are, dealing with that challenge and that you'll overcome it, okay? 
The next one's assertiveness. Standing up for yourself when your fears come true. <laughs> so uh, maybe there is situations you get into where you're fearful of judgment. Um, fearful of making a mistake in the public eye. And you know, you go there and you try to challenge yourself, overcome your anxiousness and it happens. Well, you know what? So what? Everyone makes mistakes. No one's perfect. And you know, just be open-minded and go of the flow and acknowledge it even. And just, just stay positive about it throughout the situation and don't beat yourself up for any errors or faults or flaws you may have. And the last one I really like is experiments, right? So this comes back down to exposure. So with anxiety, we know that to overcome it, we like to use a method called gradual exposure, which is a very effective method. And all that it involves really is, as I explained, bit by bit, we are exposing ourselves to the thing, which makes us very anxious, but it's in watered down um, strengths. It's not the ultimate fear, it's little parts of that fear. You know, so if you've got a fear of uh, maybe public speaking, you could start off with something like, say like you're sharing posts on a website, you know, it's a public format. It could be in writing to begin with, okay? And then gradually you could step it up to like um, online chatting maybe with people. Then after that, maybe you could record yourself and show it on the internet like YouTube, like I'm doing here. And then, you know, maybe the final stage of you overcoming your public speaking fear could be actually doing a live chat whether it's on Twitch or in, in person somewhere, okay? So those are gradual steps you do to build your tolerance and resistance up to the thing causing you so much stress and anxiety. So that's what we're referring to when we say experiments here. So it's minimizing your safety seeking behaviors in anxiety provoking situations in order to test and change your thoughts and beliefs and to achieve your personal goals. So, um, yeah, when we're doing that gradual exposure, we want to see what kind of thoughts come up in our mind, what kind of behaviors we see come out of ourselves. You know, if we feel like running away from the situation, we want to expose ourselves to all that kind of stuff and challenge it in the moment in a positive way. So if we've got negative thoughts, limiting thoughts coming up, you're going to ignore it and you're going to use positive self-talk. If you've got the urge to run away, remind yourself of your goal, what you're trying to achieve and overcome. So something else you can do to help you challenge your social anxiety is examine hot thoughts and beliefs you may have at that time when something's going on internally for you. So use challenging questions to debate them. Um, here's a number of questions you can use that can help you defuse any negative thought patterns you might have at that time. You could ask what's the evidence supporting and refuting my thoughts. So, you know, we're going to stay factual and objective in the moment so we don't get carried away with negative emotions. How likely is it that this bad thing would come to pass? How could I cope with it if it were to happen? What's the worst that could happen? What's the best that could happen? What's the most likely to happen? What would an impartial, independent observer think? So that's a pretty good question because it's allowing you to take yourself away from you and observe yourself as someone from the outside. So it can help you get outside of your head. What would I say to a good friend in this situation? What would a good friend say to me? What alternative possibilities are there? Is an old button of mine being pushed, which is affecting how I see and respond to this present situation. So this pretty much teaches us that you know, challenging thought patterns, which are not constructive, helps us to diffuse our social anxiety and those anxiety provoking situations that we might find ourselves in. So as we're talking about exposure and overcoming your social anxiety, we have a number of straightforward goals here that you can use immediately to start building your tolerance and resistance up so that you're not so affected in social settings. And we can just go through each one of them here. Initiate conversations with strangers could be a good one for you. Focus mindfully during conversation. Say what comes to mind naturally rather than script it. Speak longer and elaborate. Speak more personally with someone. Join group conversations already in progress. Speak up in meetings. Present to groups. 
disagree with someone, express a different opinion, share your contact information with a new person, invite someone out for the first time, call and have a conversation with someone, mingle at a group social activity or networking event, interview for a job, ask for a favor or help, ask for a raise even at your work, compliment or criticize someone, um, become intimate with someone, work, write, talk on the phone, eat, shop, dance, etc. Sing, act or otherwise perform before an audience. Okay guys, so we've outlined what social anxiety is. We've outlined a number of strategies in order to combat it. And what we can learn from going through this slide is that it's something you can definitely overcome with time but it's going to involve repetition and consistency. If you do not put in the effort to challenge yourself in this area consistently over time, it will remain there. You know, masking it isn't effective if people want to engage in um, certain use of drinking alcohol or other activities like that just to cover up these challenges they may be experiencing. We know that's not effective because as long as you cover something up, it's always going to remain there. So these kinds of things, they must be challenged directly, consistently with a specific plan over time for real results and improvements to occur. So I wish you guys the best of luck in your journey in overcoming this, if you may be experiencing it. And just know it's a very common thing. A lot of people experience um, some form of social anxiety. And yeah, if you require any help, please feel free to reach out to me. All right, guys, so now for our video analysis part of this clip, uh, we're gonna be taking a look at this guy here and his road to overcoming some social anxiety um, to do with intimacy, right? So from what I know, I think he, he's never kissed a girl before and he's come on this show here and he's trying it out for the first time. I'm not gonna lie, I watched this and it was hard to watch, it was that awkward to be honest. But um, you know, that's some real things people go through as well and they have to overcome these kinds of stages. Um, so yeah, we're gonna play the clip and kind of see his progression from his first time, how that went for him and then till afterwards till he overcomes this kind of awkwardness he has in this setting. I'm Emily, and I'm about to kiss a total stranger. Usually when you kiss someone for the first time, the lights aren't so bright. <laughs> Hello. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. What's your name? Emily. I'm Josh. Hi. <laughs> um, can I kiss you? Sure. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I screwed up. What? Ha I don't. I don't know what happened. That was more awkward than I anticipated it was gonna be. She probably thinks I'm really strange, like really awkward. Um, I don't know. I, there's no way I think she liked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. He basically kissed my hair. I mean, it was the worst. <laughs> it was really bad. There is definitely no chance that I would be going on a speed date with him. I would guess that he probably hasn't kissed a lot of girls. If my hair could talk, my hair would say, this definitely was not love at first kiss. I don't think she's coming. Oh my gosh. Sorry, man. Well. Wow. 
All right, so to keep it PG on this video and to save too much uh, kissing around and intimate stuff, <laughs> I'll forward it, forward wind it to the uh, next part of this clip where um, he ends up meeting a girl and uh, he actually manages to pull a kiss off and they end up getting along well together. So take a look at this clip. It was nice. Yeah, yeah, that was good. <laughs> Bye. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So good. Yeah! Wow, man. That was awesome. That's it. <laughs> Maybe she'll be my girlfriend. You never know. I feel on cloud nine right now, I feel ecstatic. Great, great. Unbelievable. This is one of the best days of my life to have that magical kiss finally come true. I'm for sure going to the speed date. I want to get to know this girl. That's awesome. Very happy for him. Hi. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, this is Sparky. He's so cute. Thank you. I'm so relieved. I was hoping she felt sparks from that first kiss and wanted to, you know, get to know me better. <laughs> these are for you, by the way. Thank I got you. these for you. I can't even say the name. Hydrog something. Hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, yeah. I think that's what they're called. I felt like during my kiss with Josh, there was definitely a strong connection between us. I think that Sparky is hoping for me to have a really good spark with Josh. Are you mentally prepared for a uh, brain <laughs> challenge? Are you ready, Spark? <laughs> so I have a game that I made up to find out more. I've had the best kiss of my life. I want to see, you know, how far this can go. Like, maybe she'll be my girlfriend. Maybe she'll be my wife. <laughs> my whole experience with Josh definitely proves that love at first kiss works. It really works. <laughs> there you have it. Yeah. <laughs> I have high hopes that he could be the one that I spend my life with. Okay, so that's the end of that video. Um, you know, so if we're talking about anxiety, look at where this person started to begin with. They had a hard time expressing intimacy with others. I think that's something common people experience often. And um, in the beginning, I mean, he, he didn't have the skill he needed and the confidence and you know he failed the first time he tried but look the next time around he came and he improved he challenged himself in that situation that was causing him anxiety and he overcame it and he managed to find himself you know a new partner so that's great that's a great example of you know what we discussed about challenging those situations that provoke anxiety in you building up your resistance and tolerance to them over time and then being able to achieve your goals. So this is a great story for this person and I hope you enjoyed this video and that if you're experiencing this, these examples and this information can help you on the path to overcoming it.